Hello, my name is Andrew McConaughey from ICANN staff, and with me today is Christian Hesselman from ICANN Security Stability and Advisory Committee to talk about a recent report the SAC has published on DNS and the Internet of Things. Thank you for joining us today, Christian. You bet. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the SAC's report on DNS and the Internet of Things? Sure. Uh, the title of the report is called The DNS and the Internet of Things, uh, Opportunities, Risks, and Challenges. Uh, the number is SEC 105, and we, we released it uh, early June. Mm -hmm. um, and the uh, report talks about uh, the IoT and the DNS as two co-evolving and interacting uh, ecosystems. And the purpose of the document is to enable the ICANN community to understand the IoT uh, ecosystem and the interaction with uh, the DNS. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a different type of report than what we're usually, than what we usually put out from the, uh, from the ASAC because it doesn't contain any recommendations. It's basically a tutorial style document to help the ICANN community understand, well, the interaction between the IoT and the domain name system. Mm -hmm. What are some of the opportunities uh, that the DNS offers for the Internet of Things? Now, there's various opportunities, and then we list a few in the, in the report. Uh, but basically, they stem from the, um, uh, from, uh, the DNS being a globally distributed infrastructure that can provide various uh, security functions on the one hand, mm -hmm. and that the IoT introduces new types of string, more stringent um, security, stability, and transparency uh, requirements. Um, so for example, um, if you look at a typical IoT deployment, it consists of IoT devices that interact with people's physical world, so they sense information, but they also act upon it. Mm -hmm. And they uh, have connections to edge networks, for instance, through Zigbee or Wi-Fi or 5G or whatever, then connect to the internet and then connect to uh, backend services that they use to, uh, to perform their, their tasks. So it's basically a constellation, a, it's like um, a group of uh, IoT devices, network connectivity, and uh, services that these uh, IoT devices make use of. And the uh, opportunity for the, the DNS is, for instance, that it provides, uh, it has a DNSSEC for message uh, integrity verification. Mm -hmm. So with DNSSEC, if, so assume that all these dev IoT devices uh, support DNSSEC uh, validation, so they can validate DNSSEC signatures, then this means that they can validate that they're talking to the right service on the internet to perform their task. For instance, they know that if they share information about people's physical environment with that um, uh, backend service for analysis, for instance, they know that they're sharing it with the right service. Right. So this reduces the opportunity, the, the probability that a, a, uh, um, uh, a cyber criminal, for example, is able to replace the uh, genuine service with a malicious service, and as a result, the IoT device sharing sens uh, sensor data with a malicious service or accepting instructions from a malicious service. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the risks uh, that the Internet of Things poses to the DNS and the, the wider internet? Yeah. yeah, so one of the risks that we identified in the report are uh, IoT botnets that can launch DDoS attacks on DNS infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and this, uh, let's say, analysis is based on various measurement studies that have been carried out by academic uh, institutions in the past. And uh, basically, uh, IoT botnets are uh, IoT devices like uh, you know, cameras and light bulbs and whatever that have been infected by malware. Uh, so they contain a vulnerability, for example, and that allowed uh, 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 cyber criminals, for instance, to in, uh, install uh, mal malware on the mm -hmm. device and they can then control it. Mm -hmm. And this means that um, the botnet master, in this case, can send out a command to these infected devices to all start sending traffic to a target at the same time. Mm -hmm. So this would then constitute a DDoS attack on that target. Mm -hmm. And that target could be a uh, DNS operator, but could also be other types of uh, DNS infrastructure or service providers like you know, banks or uh, you know, critical infrastructure like mm -hmm. um, uh, energy grids, for example. Sure. Um, yeah, so. So given some of the risks and opportunities that we've identified, um, what are some of the challenges to the internet community that they can uh, address these with? Yeah. 
So one uh, challenge to um, one challenge, for example, is to develop a DNSX security library for IoT devices, mm -hmm. so that uh, IoT devices would be able to validate DNSX signatures. So that's the opportunity we spoke about before. Uh, and the other uh, challenge would be to um, um, to mitigate uh, uh, DDoS attacks from IoT botnets, mm -hmm. which we think requires a whole range of measures. So it would require um, IoT developers, for example, to have a better understanding of network security and device security. Mm -hmm. So that's more like an educational component, I would say. There's a need for um, security systems in edge networks so that they can detect and clip off uh, DDoS attacks or DDoS traffic from IoT devices early on, mm -hmm. uh, so proactively, I would say. And there's a need for um, I, for infrastructure operators to, for instance, share information on uh, IoT botnets. So, mm -hmm. for instance, they could share information on what type of DDoS of traffic a certain botnet would generate, how they handled it, and then share that information with other infrastructure operators like a DNS operator, uh, so that they are prepared in case the attack traffic comes their way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Christian. Thanks for talking with us today. You bet. Thank you.